Welcome, everybody, to Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris right here on IE Sports Radio. IE Sports Radio is your direct feed for all that is sports. You are listening to Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris. We are bringing you the most comprehensive view of Philadelphia sports by fans for fans. Hello, everybody. As the intro plays out, I am Chris Amos, and my partner, Bobby Cash, is with me. Bobby, what's going on? What's up, Chris? How are you? About the same as last week. Um, some of the stuff we had talked about that was coming up between um, the Eagles and the Phillies seemed to have uh, taken place. Unfortunately, we were correct by what we said last week. Yeah, we were right on. Not just last week, we pretty much called it. Philly season, they weren't a, they weren't a playoff team. You stood your ground with that. You were right all along. I kind of got sucked in and believed that they could sneak in, but once they took the lead in the division, especially, I thought they were gonna at least fight to the end. But the fight wasn't there. It ended in Atlanta with the whimper. Didn't even have a chance. Amazing, amazing how you can sweep a team to start the season and then get swept by that team to end your season. Exactly. And I like how you put the. Uh, Description of the show: Phillies fail with the PH. It's a nice touch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like when I, when I make any comments about about uh, people talking about the fires, and I say a lot of people instead of instead of looking at the fires with their heads, they're looking at it with their heart, and I spell heart H A R T. So, um, yeah, Phillies. The one thing that I noticed with the series that I was watching closely was Bryce Harper. And, you know, if he would carry the team like an MVP would, and he was the one for 11 for the series. No, he was 0 for 11. 0 for 11? I thought he got yeah. the one left field. No, I think he was 0 for 11, but he scored a run um, after getting walked in, in, in the first game when they were when they were down uh, to nothing. He scored that run, I think, in, okay. the, ninth, in the ninth inning. Okay, 1 for 11, 0 for 11. If they 0 for 11, is he still win the MVP? Not, not, not if I'm voted. I know we've, we've talked, you know, a lot about it, and it seems like the odds don't really coincide with the players we think deserve. There's a few people on Atlanta that have some decent numbers as well, and I think if, if they were on Philadelphia teams, if, if we followed the Braves as closely as we followed the, the Phillies, we'd be saying that these guys should be MVP candidates, but, they're, but they're, their names never come up. Yeah, is that because there's three of them? and <laughs> There's nobody to shoot. I mean, they can't really pick. I mean, if you look at Austin Riley, Freddie Freeman, and um, Adam Duvall, they all have better power numbers than Bryce. And they yeah, probably, and they probably have more they probably have more RBIs and runs scored, too. But that's just but that's just the product of, of, of the team that, that they're on as well. Well, I mean, MVP is no longer a... A team, it's 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 basically an individual award. It's not like the NBA where the MVP mostly comes from a you know a Final Four team or a championship team. The MVP is going to you know Mike Trout who plays for the Angels and come in last place. I mean this year it's going to go to Otani who played for the Angels and they had a bad season. So it's, it's no longer a you know it's not going to come from a hundred. The Giants aren't going to have the MVP because they won 107 games. No, you could, you could make an argument. For uh, Crawford is there um, being, being the, the MVP as well, I think. Um, and, and, and if you look at what numbers have been put up, especially in the second half of the season, Juan Soto had some outstanding numbers on, on, on a team that was really gutted at the trade deadline. Yeah, he's he's um, he's second now in uh, in the odds. Soto was he ended up at plus one ninety and Bryce around minus two fifteen. Yeah, I saw someone who um, I go back and forth with a number of times on, on, on Twitter. He had put out there. I, I didn't think about this. If, if things would have stayed, you could have had Trey Turner, Bryce Harper, and Juan Soto. That's not bad in the lineup. Yeah, that's amazing. They traded the the you know that the, they traded the the batting champ. He won the batting title, right? Trey Turner. I yes. Believe he did. Yes. They traded the batting title <laughs> and, and, and Cy Young. Young. Yeah, for, for a bunch of money. <laughs> but and Shane. Kane on the chat board says, episode 30, congratulations to you and Cash and Chris. Love you and love your show. Go Birds. Thanks, Shane. We appreciate it. Well, the Birds are going to go to Carolina this weekend. We know that. <laughs> yeah. They're going to come home one and 
before. We, we, it's not like we didn't predict this either. We should change the title of the show to Sports <laughs> Nostradamus because everything, everything we say is coming true. Last week I was I, I, I put out there as a solid lock that the Cowboys were going to end that winning streak of the Panthers. I, I saw that coming a mile away. And then, and then this week the Cowboys get the Giants. I mean, if you if you look at the Cowboys' remaining schedule, I, I don't I don't see more than one loss. Now, of course, they, they could lose one game in the division, but other than losing to Kansas City on the road, I don't see I don't see many games where the Cowboys are going to, are going to be the underdog. It's amazing because they're, they're, they're playing Atlanta, they're playing New England, and of course they got to play the Eagles, they got to play the Redskins, they got to play uh, the Giants, they're playing the Falcons, the Broncos, the Raiders. Well, if you look at the um, power rankings, it's got top three teams are Arizona, Dallas, and the Chargers. I must said San Diego. I have I have a number of uh, family members who are huge Dallas Cowboy fans, and you know. Uh, anybody out there who um, is uh, following along, please uh, send some prayers for them because they need it. Um, being Cowboys fans, but <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just joking. But no, it's one of those things to where my, the comment I've made to them all along was, I mean, they should be in the NFC Championship game against the Buccaneers is, is how I see it. But I, mean, I, I watched them that, that whole game with the Bucks and the Patriots on Sunday night. It was, it was... It was really hampered by the rain. The rain, you know. It was. Get, yeah, it didn't let Brady show off, show off his potential. But um, he, he really uh, focused in on Antonio Brown a lot in that game. Surprised at that. It seemed like third down, he was always looking for Brown. Well, with Gronk being out, I guess that was one of the, you know, that was another option for him. Yeah. yeah. Top two receivers, Evans and, and Godwin. Godwin was like a non-factor. Yeah. Know, <laughs> Belichick took him out of the game. He always does that. He might have shut him down. Well, I think I think this week they can shut down a number of players. If, any, if anybody has any type of uh, minor injury or whatever, because they're playing, I think um, I think they're playing the Falcons this. No, they're not playing the Falcons. I think they I, I think they have an easy game coming up with the Buccaneers. Um, Buccaneers? Um, yeah. They just played the Falcons. Yeah, they just played the Falcons, so they're they're, they're not playing them this, this weekend. I know who they play because somebody just told me they're taking them in their in their uh, survivor pool. It's a, it's a bad it's a bad team I know that. Yeah, that's what I, that that's what I was thinking when I was watching that game on on Sunday night. You're right. The rain the rain did have a lot to do with that. I mean, that field goal is good. I think if if, if there's no rain. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, Miami. The Dolphins. That's it. That's it. It's Miami. Well, Miami Atlanta is is there much difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, speaking of the field goals, when they kicked that ball, I'm like, you know. He's not really a guy to make 56 yard field goals. And then you think of um, J- uh, Jason Tucker, not Jason Tucker, what's his name? Tucker from um, Justin Tucker. From Baltimore. From Baltimore, making a 66 yarder. There's got to be something with the footballs this year. They, they, must have, they must be either softer or have more air in them because these balls, they're, they're going farther than ever, it seems like, with the field goals. Yeah, and that's, you know, I guess 56 was the longest for the uh, Patriots kicker that. that... I think they put that up there. So, that, 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 that would have equaled his longest of his career. And you're right. Yeah, it, it always seems like the distance is usually not a problem. I, you, you and I, growing up watching football, you would see a lot of times on field goals, even when it was fifty yards. You know that that, that became almost an, um, a difficult one, and, we, and you'd see balls dropping short. Yeah, exactly. They could barely kick the ball fifty yards. The human bodies evolved that much in twenty years. Did they pick a ball ten yards further? I don't know. I don't know if it's. I don't know if it's that, or if it's if it's the fact that they, that the kicker might be getting an extra step or two because the, the blocking's that much better. I'm I'm not sure, but 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 you're right. When 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 field goals now fifty now fifty fifty yards is like an extra point for for some of these kickers. Oh, no. Uh, and that goalpost. I mean, when you look at a goalpost, I mean, what it's it, it's five it's five yards across. Wow. Well. Amazing. Amazing, it is. I always, I always yeah. thought... I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to talk about the Eagles team. Yeah, finish, finish it off. No, I, I always thought what they should do is in the middle of the goalpost, right down the middle, there, there should be another thin pole. If you hit that, you get four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but... Yeah. They do need something. You know, we, we, we've, we've complained about the flags. I mean, it's gotten to the point of... When, when, whenever there's a big play or a score, you expect the flag to come nowadays. Mm-hmm. I'm just waiting for it. A touchdown. Up, like, 
Well, if, well, if you watch the Eagles game, if they score a touchdown, you know it's coming back. Every time. And then, and then there was calls that weren't made that should have been made. Every, every every game, it's just it's just getting worse and worse. And yeah, I think I think a lot of that a lot of that's the discipline with with, with the Eagles for some of those penalties. I, I think exactly on those touchdowns this past week that were called back. I mean, what what they were calling are penalties. But what you said, what gets to be more frustrating is when there's obvious pass interference and holding and things like that, and it's not called. Especially with the play in the end zone, and like somebody on Twitter did tell me that you're allowed to do that. Push a guy once the once the quarterback's out of the pocket, you can just throw a guy on the ground. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess maybe I guess maybe that might be stretching that rule. I mean, it's it's one it's one of those things to where if it's if it's Tom Brady throwing the ball, it's probably a flag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the Eagles were just outclassed. Nobody on the team could cover Tyreek Hill. Five touchdowns if you wanted to. Everybody that's joining us in the chat, welcome. Um, if you have some questions or whatever, put them up. We'll, we'll try to get, we'll try to get to them as we're frustrated here covering the uh, end of the Philly season and that Eagles game against Kansas City. I, I didn't realize that Andy Reid was winning his hundredth game as, as as head coach of the Chiefs. Yeah, that that includes playoff games. Okay. Yeah, it's not, it wasn't just regular season. So he had 100 wins with the Eagles, 100 wins with the Chiefs. First coach in NFL history to do so. Two different teams. Yeah, and there was some back and forth I had with some people this this week that was interesting, too, because they were, they, they were talking about Andy Reid. They were talking about Doug Peterson and how their first seasons went and what their records were and, th- and things like that, and, and looking at Nick Sirianni and what's, what, what's going on now. And... I, I guess I mean people were frustrated with Doug a number of year, years ago, when um, with the first season because the, the team wasn't winning. But but we're pointing out to me also talking about Jalen Hurts and other quarterbacks who started their career with with, with um, a lot of losing from Troy Aikman to Warren Moon, and I could bring up the list of it. But, but the NFL is different now. This 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 waiting game is is not is not working. You mean as far as playing quarterback right off the bat? Well, what I'm saying is it's like, okay, give it time. Give Sirianni time to, to become a coach. Give give Hurts time, whatever. I, I understand that, but that just doesn't play well in, in, in today's sports world where um, – oh, oh, you mean patience, patience watching the fans? Co- correct. Yeah, well, it, it used to be years ago when he drafted the quarterback, you know, in the, in the first round he was, he was put on ice and wouldn't play for a year or two years. Now they're, they're right. They're thrown right in there with the amount of money they're being paid. They can't afford that. Instead, when you see guys like Zach Wilson that aren't ready, and Trey Lance was thrown into the 49ers game on Sunday. He was like one for his first seven. He had that wide open receiver that he hit. But he looks like he can move in the pocket, but arm wise, I don't think he's ready. And if Carson Wentz was thrown. Was Carson Wentz wasn't thrown right in? Was he, was he put him from the beginning? I be- I believe they did. Yeah, he played right off the bat. Yeah, I think so. I don't remember there being a backup who was in, who was in front of him. And I'm pretty sure McNabb. Did. No, I, I I know I, I know who started in front of McNabb. That was Doug Peterson. Doug Peterson. <laughs> I I have an interesting story about that. I was I was at an Eagles game at the at the old Vet Stadium that year, and during that game, it was one of those things to where Peterson had a little. So, something happened, and it was that rule to where if you got to if you got to call a timeout or something due to an injury, or, or or they stop playing due to an injury, the player at least has to come out for a play. And McNabb came in, and the crowd was all excited about the fact that he he was coming in. They they, they didn't understand that he was only coming in for <laughs> yeah, I remember that yeah. For, yeah. For, for that one play. But it was it was funny because when when I walked when I walked into the vet on the on, on the one side of the vet there was a huge sign, and it said no offense. We're all petered out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was that was back in the day when the fans were kind of a, a little bit more um, boisterous about about those type things. And the Eagles had a fourteen point lead, I think, with 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 four minutes to go in the game, and they ended up losing it in overtime. Um, a Deuce Staley fumble near the goal line that would have sealed the game, and then a pass a pass was blocked at the line, and a lineman ran it in for the Giants, but. That was the Doug Peterson year. That was going way back, I think, 99 or something like that. 99, 2000. Yeah, I was with 
Mavs rookie year. Yeah. Yeah, there was um, there was some talk in Philadelphia today of, around and bring and bring it up Donovan McNabb, um, with the fact that uh, Hurts being a black quarterback, and to me, I, I'm just shocked that that's even even mentioned anymore. It, it, it just it, it's not even a, it's not even a factor that, that registers no. anymore. No, who who brought that up? It was it was on one of the uh, radio shows today. The caller brought it up, or no, no, it was no, it, it, it kicked off the show. Really? Yeah, um, because it, it was kind of couched in the thing. Is, you know, a lot of people are getting down on Hurts, and and how much does does the fact that he's a black quarterback play into that? Uh, and I'm like, no, it it at least, at least to me. I mean, maybe maybe there was some contact on social media and some different, and some different things, right. and. A lot of the comments were the same thing too. It's like, no, now, nowadays quarter, quarterback. I mean, all, all that's there, there, there's enough of them out there that that, that are that are good enough. And I mean, that, yeah. and the Eagles are probably their, their their best two quarterbacks are black quarterbacks. I mean, it's, yep. they've had you know, the, for thirty years. They've had. I mean, it's not like it's something new. No, and it's interesting too when you when when we when we look at Jalen Hurts. I mean. You can go through and pick out numbers, and oh well, he's in this category, and he's doing. I don't know. I'm 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 not sold on him as a franchise quarterback at this point. No, nobody is. I don't think. I think if they're they're high enough in the draft and the right players there, probably go quarterback. But those are going to have three picks. So. Yeah, but with Doug with with Doug Vaughn, are they still a quarterback factory? Yeah. <laughs> yeah what's it called? They, they, how he's still here? Yeah. Howie Roseman still be the one making those picks. Yeah, I see that. I see that a few times on social media as well. If if the NFL draft was today, the Eagles would have the fifth pick, the seventh pick, and the eighth or something like that. And it's like, huh? I guess they're going to package them and move up I mean, if, they, if they have the right player there. Yeah, and it's like, well, how how can they ruin this? I mean, but it looks like it looks like last year with the um, with the pick of Devontae Smith, they, they they didn't make a mistake there. Yeah, as long as he stays healthy. Exactly right. We'll be happy to see him. He's getting better each week. He gets open, no problem. Just will he be the quarterback that'll be delivered the passes to him, putting the ball where it needs to be. He's much better rolling to the right. Looks like teams are going to try to roll him out to the left because throwing across his body, throwing that way. Well, most quarterbacks are, of course, better rolling to the right. He's horrible going to the left. Yeah, he still has that. He still has the instinct to run before he. Um... Is his patient? I mean, he's mm. he's going off one one read and then um, not being as patient as as, as, I, as I think he could be to let some guys get open. And, and, and they and they the Eagles are always calling this RPO, and when they do that, he he's taking the run option. Yeah, well, it's, it's, <laughs> when you don't have the arm, that's going to be the safer option. Right. Well, and it's 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 frustrating. It's frustrating because we haven't we haven't mentioned the word that's killing the Eagles now, and that and that's defense. I mean, they had thirty points this week. Yeah, and what did I say? There won't be a punt in this game. There wasn't a punt in the game. It's amazing. You, you can see it early on. The Eagles weren't stopping them, and their, their defense was just as bad. You know, I didn't really think it would actually happen, but maybe there'd be a three and a half, some point, a penalty, a third and 20. But it's like the Chiefs were just methodical. They, they Whatever they wanted to do, they did. There was no stopping them. That's been that's been an issue in Philadelphia going back a couple of seasons. I mean, I, th- I think... After the Super Bowl year, and even even if you look at the Super Bowl, how many points were put up? I mean, the the, the, the defense for the Eagles used to be what they were known. If you go back to Buddy Ryan and stuff, that they, they they were trying to be a, a defensive team, but now it just seems like teams can score well. Well, they were always decent against the run, no matter what. This year, they can't stop the run. They got to be giving up seven, six, seven yards to carry. It's, it's, it's nobody there. The whole middle of the field is just wide open. Well, isn't that what isn't that what they're paying Fletcher Cox to do? He, he, <laughs> hasn't, even, he hasn't even registered a stat. <laughs> how, how is that possible? He wasn't. Did you notice, like, when they were in the red zone, they would show the overhead? There was nobody in the middle of the field. For the, there was no linebacker. There was no. only two linemen. What, what were they doing? What, what kind of defense were they playing? Guard the sidelines? Well, the defensive coordinator today apparently made the comment that because someone was asking him if he wanted to put in a dime package, and he just said, "I don't know. We don't have the personnel to do that." I, 
I'm like, okay, either you don't think you have the personnel to do it, or you don't want to coach it, or you don't think it'll work, or you're taking a shot at the people who put this yeah. team together. Yeah, well, they don't. They, they, who's the safety? <laughs> I don't know. Exactly. There's no safety on the team. What 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 middle linebacker is putting fear in somebody? Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> Alex Singleton makes every tackle. Seemingly. Yeah, and it got to be one of those things to, to, to where you were right. The Eagles could move the ball, and they, and they were scoring and not having fun. But the problem that that came up was they – and the Eagles, have, Eagles had this problem going back to last year. It's so frustrating as a fan watching teams fail in the red zone. Yeah, I mean, it's – I'm sorry, I'm saying, saying it like the tower. Thanks for tuning in, Tyrant. <laughs> you said watching the Eagles fail in the red zone? Yes. The one, the one pass, he had, he had Zach Ertz wide open. It, it was pulled by about, what, eight yards? Yeah, and it's like I said, as, as a fan, it's just yeah. it's just so frustrating because you're, you're, you're looking there at that score, and you're, as soon as that team gets into the red zone, you're, you're trying, you're adding seven to, to the score well, of your team, and it's like, you can't do that now. And we're not used to that either. We're used to the, the bad, but don't break Eagles defense. You know? True. Not, not anymore. This is a rebuilding season. It's, it's, it's tough to see. We haven't, we haven't had this bad of a team probably since probably 98 years before McNabb when he got the second pick. Yeah, I guess I guess because they, they moved up to take Carson Wentz as the second pick. That's right, they did 11. But no, yeah. no, Carson, no, that's McNabb, I'm saying. Oh, right, right. What I'm saying is, yeah, the team, they, they had the second pick in the draft and took um, Carson Wentz, but they moved up because the team wasn't as bad as it was right, right. For, for when they actually had the legitimate second pick and took McNabb, correct. Yeah, yeah right, right, right. Oh, yeah, some of those teams there in, in, in the late 90s and in early 2000s when, when Andy Reid first came in his first two years or whatever, it, yeah, it was it was tough. Yeah, and, yeah and Andy, Andy Reid didn't. He had only like one one losing season, I think, as an Eagles coach. Yeah, I, I think he, he, he had um, – it was a little bit of a struggle the first year, obviously, and I think I think maybe – what was he, 500 or, or just a little bit over that the second year? Um, it was 7-9 or 8-8. Eight or was he three and thirteen for sure, four and twelve? Yeah. It, it, Once it, he got his players here, it was, it was win every year. Yeah, except they couldn't push it over um, in the NFC Championship game uh, only one time. Yeah, it was heartbreak year after year. Yeah, and and, and, some, and some talk that I heard today was talking about that game since McNabb was brought up. It was um, the Super Bowl game against the Patriots and. The one comment was the Patriots were the better team. I don't think they were. The Patriots were a good team that year. I think the Eagles were just as good. I, I just, I just think it, it just, it just came down to the fact that that um, McNabb kind of uh, just didn't come through. Choked. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, the guys, you know, and the Patriots were more of the team. <laughs> The Bill Belichick, anybody can step in my system type of team. And they did have like Teddy Bruschi on that team. And, um, Deion Brandt, I believe, was the wide receiver. Still had Tom Brady in his early years. And, and they cheated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they cheated too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spygate. <laughs> that, that helped them a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we look forward to this week. Um, Eagles won Carolina. Carolina coming off that loss to Dallas, which I, I, I think Car- Car- Carolina is. I mean, they they started off three and zero, but I don't think they um, are a team that's. I don't know if they're a playoff team or not, and I don't see the Eagles beating them. But if the Eagles are going to win a game here in the next couple of weeks, that's that's one I think they might be able to win. That one in Detroit. Yeah, well, Carolina's missing their best player. Christian McCaffrey. So, yeah. Um, you know, if you're going to catch them, this is the time to catch them. Well, once again, you're going to be looking at a situation to where if 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 this team can't get to the quarterback, oh my goodness. Oh uh, yeah, that's the same. They have they have DJ Moore who's been unstoppable. He beat me in my fantasy game this week at 30, 30 points, two touchdowns. He's he, he's a DK Metcalf type receiver. He's He's gotten big. He's, he's actually a local guy. He went to Maryland and he went to school in Philly. But I'm saying if they, if, if they can get some pressure on, on, on Sam Darnold, they, I mean, if you can't get pressure on him, you're, you, you know, you're not going to get pressure on anybody. I don't, oh, I'm not, you know, 
it's all about offensive line. That's football. Football is all about yep. protecting the quarterback. Eagles could do it in the beginning of the year. Now they can't. They've, missed, they've lost three linemen. That's, that's under, you can't recover from that. No, no, you can't. I don't know uh, um, Carolina's offensive line, how well, how good they are. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't see that much of the game. Um against the Dallas this weekend. I mean, it would have been a flip back and forth because it was on at the same time. Yeah. I watched the, the red zone, the late games, called some of the Arizona Rams game, Arizona. Looks good. They do. Um, I don't know if uh, I haven't seen enough of them to say whether they're as, as, as good as they, uh, their record shows being, being 4-0. But the thing is, coming out of that division, if, you, if you're going to come out of that division, I mean, that's a tough division right there with the Niners and the Rams. Definitely. Probably one of the toughest divisions in the league. It's not the toughest. Yeah, exactly. So what do we got going on tonight? We've got the um, Red Sox and Yankees in a one-game playoff. And it's 0-0, zero, zero, uh, bottom one. Yeah. And I, I was watching the, the pregame, you know, the introductions. <laughs> Surprised that the Yankees have Aaron Judge back. Like he be, even, he's more a four or five hitter, and then Glaber Torres is, is batting fifth. I think he should be hitting second. That, that surprised me. They have a power hitter in second like that. Yeah, and I know I noticed that the uh, Braves moved Freeman to batting second too. I don't know if that's some yeah. if, if that's some new philosophy that's come down or what. Oh, with these new uh, yeah saber metrics. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, or or or. or or whatever, like um, like the Phillies game on Sunday was, uh, oh, the big celebration that Hector Neris is the all-time leader uh, in relief pitchers for strikeouts. Well, he got the loss in that game, didn't he? On Sunday? Yeah, he lost that game. I watched not one second of it. I know. <laughs> I know. I did, I, I did not have that game on either. I just saw I, that come across on social media. I'm like, so what? Heck, when you know. When you bring up Hector Neris, the only thing I, what, what's the first thing that comes to mind when, when you say Hector Neris? One save. That's it. Right. <laughs> and, pe- and people wanting him back. I'm like. Not me. Not me either. Um, the only person I would, would really want to come back in that bullpen would be Connor Brogdon because he's young. Yeah, Connor Brogdon. About it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, Archie Bradley, no. No. Jose Alvarado. No. No. Ian Kennedy? Never. Sam, Sam Coonrod? Eh. Maybe. Maybe. I don't, I don't want any Kennedy here to begin with. How about Cam Bedrosian? <laughs> well, now, see, I think you could bring Cam Bedrosian in. He's he's a guy to bring in in situations if you get down 10 nothing. I was just going to say that. A long relief guy. <laughs> like like a, clay, a clay conjury. <laughs> Well, you're in your most important games of the season, and, 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 you're, and you're struggling against these bad teams. You fight back to take a lead, and then you have to – you're bringing – that's who you have to bring in? That's why the Phillies aren't in the playoffs. Exactly. <laughs> because of those situations. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things, too, where people have talked about um, next year will be a year for the Phillies to be in the playoffs, and I know Bryce Harper had made some comments – What's going to change? Are they going to get um, Chipper Jones and uh, reincarnated in the offseason? Uh, <laughs> how are they going to make the playoffs next season? Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> that's going happen. Well, the, the, one, the one comment I made today on Twitter was, so baseball is going to let every team in the playoffs next year? <laughs> I, I just... Um, what, Zach F one's back, so we're going to make the playoffs? Oh, that's true. Well, I know last year, in, in around the same time, similar situation when he had that kind of press conference or whatever, he just said, but we need JT Real Muto to be back as catcher. Um, don't go by what Bryce Harper says right as the season ends. That, that didn't work out too well for him this year. No. And the problem that they're going to run into next year as well is these other teams are going to be better just by default. The Mets are going to be better and the Braves are going to be better because right. Acuna will be back and you would think DeGrom could be healthy. Yeah, absolutely. They're going to have, to have DeGrom healthy. Um, they might get Syndergaard back, who hasn't pitched in years. Yeah, I, don't know if he's, I don't know if he's a free agent or not. Me either. He probably is. I mean, 
got that whole contract on the disabled list. He might as well be the Phillies' big off off season signing and coming yeah, and pitch, yeah. pitch pitch yeah. one game and that's it. Be on the DL. Yeah, we, we've had our doctor look at him and he looks really good. <laughs> one game, <laughs> one, one spring training start. Well, I definitely say it. My my hope for the Phillies would and and what would give me something to look forward to next year in the season would be opening day a different battery than was opening day last year and the year before. If they have a different battery, then I'll be excited for the season. If not, if even one piece of that battery is still there, which I know it's going to be. After. Yeah. Well, I don't know what Nolan's going to What's going to happen with him? He might just quietly go away. I mean... <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't, that, that wouldn't be I, – I don't think that would be the biggest loss ever. Um, he's no. been he, – I'm sure there's teams out there that he performed well against that they'll probably like him. They'll probably offer him four years. But they can have him at this point. I hope he stays in the National League. Yeah, true. If we could face him. Although they'll probably, they'll probably struggle against him. Yes, yeah, that goes to one of those comments where, you know, the only team the Phillies bullpen could get out would be the Phillies. <laughs> <laughs> We have reached 8.31 here, 8.31 Eastern Time, which means it's 5.31 out on the West Coast. And, Bobby, you want to just take a few-minute break here and come back, and then we'll go around to see what we can talk about with the upcoming Sixers season, and we'll do the Flyers a minute and some NASCAR. You got it. Sounds good. As we go to break, guys, let me mention to you and to everybody listening, Southern California Warriors semi-pro football team. Now, the Warriors this year have a 3-3 three three record. They just came off a bye, and they're going into the final four weeks of the season. So, 3-3, three and three, don't want to end up 500. they got to start kicking it in gear and get themselves to have a winning record this year. The world of semi-pro sports is unlike any other sports organization because the players pay to play in hopes of so many different outcomes, whether it's playing to pay, whether it's playing to get film to try out for professional teams, big-time colleges, or just playing to stay in shape. No matter what, all semi-pro players have one thing in common, and that's playing for the love of the game. The Southern California Warriors have been on a quest to earn titles and give players second chances since 2017. Now, whether you're in Southern California or anywhere in the world, give semi-pro sports a chance. If you are somebody that needs to get back into sports, or you know somebody that needs to get back into sports, you need to check out semi-pro sports and if you don't have something in your local area, there's no better place to start than the Southern California Warriors. On Twitter, at SoCalWarriors. On Instagram, Southern California underscore Warriors. And they're on Facebook, Southern California Warriors. If you know somebody or yourself needs to get back into sports and you love sports, check out the Southern California Warriors and semi-pro sports today. If you're somebody out there who has a business, and you are looking to hire somebody, what you need to do is get a background check on them. That's going to be an important step, and it's an important thing that's going to help you, it's going to help your customers, and also it's going to help your employees, and it's going to make your business that much better. And where you need to go is to Background Check International. Now, that is on the website at bcint.com, which stands for Background Check International, and you need to let Kit Freeman take care of this for you. Kit founded and has managed Background Check International since 1994, and he is here to help you with the screening process. Contact Kit today and let him help you make the hiring process that much easier. Once again, bcint.com is the website. If you need to hire somebody, the best place to start is right there. Guys, we'll be back in a few minutes. Right here on IP Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that sports. It's Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris.
Hey guys, it's Blake Henley, better known as H-Town Blake to some of you. Happy to announce that Faces Loader is back in full force. We'll be bringing that high heat every Tuesday night here on IE Sports Radio. So come home, get ready, dig into that batter's box, and see if you can chase that high heat, baby. So we'll be coming to you live with all the stats, all the rundowns, all the division rivalries, and every team that's going to make the playoff push to get to that one and only October and get to the pinnacle of what baseball is to hoist that commissioner's trophy when it's all said and done. up sports fans you're looking for a different type of sports talk show something you haven't heard before you gotta check out the bs3 sports show every other saturday on two live stews radio 1 p.m central time 2 p.m eastern sports talk at its finest always have great guests playing some good hip-hop you don't want to miss it make sure to tune in to the bs3 sports show every other Saturday at 1 p.m. Central Time, 2 p.m. Eastern. What's good, fight fans? It's your boy, Marcus Los Great. Here to give you what you want. Here to give you what you need. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming to you live. Straight from your mama's basement with a crispy white like tea. <laughs> they are coming to you live every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. It is Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. We're back. We're going to talk a little bit of, we, we decided we're going to talk about the uh, Sixers and preview their season more. Uh, we'll go into more depth next week just to mention that they are playing some preseason games right now. And the Ben Simmons situation still seems to be exactly the same. And I think it's going to be that way for a while to come. They're going to play chicken with each other. I mean, the Sixers are going to have to wait till the right trade of the trade um, comes up. I don't think they're in any hurry. He's not costing them any money. I think they probably behind the scenes are let you know want him to stay out longer so that he loses more money. Not that he's hurting for cash. But... No, I don't think he is either. But he did. <laughs> but he did put up his uh, condo. Um... For sale, the condo he has in Philadelphia, he put that up for sale. So, yeah, he's, he's made up his mind. He's not coming back. He, a couple <laughs> players wanted to go out and see him, and he told them not to bother. So, he has. Uh, I don't understand his aggression. It, it should be from the team and being mad at him, but somehow he's turned it around on them. Yeah, and, and the thing is, it's one of those things where it's just a distraction now, and. This team, um, the last thing they need is that distraction. 
I mean, it's a shame. It's a young, it's, it's a mixture of young guys, veterans. It's just somebody, Tyrese Maxey is basically the guy that's going to have to step up. You know, it's going to open up uh, the door for guys like Isaiah Joe. Maybe a little more playing time for Paul Reed. You can see Andre Gentleman step in. I mean, it's, it's, somebody's going to have to take this place. It's, you know, it's not the scoring, it's the, the other things. The, handle, the ball handling, the defense. Um, you know, just running, running up court and going and standing in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... And, I, and, I'm, and I'm just sitting here going over my mind it too. And, and what's just the, the first the frustrating thing is, I mean, the, the, the Sixers are no no better. And okay, the, the season ended um, as horrible as it could with that game seven loss to Atlanta last year. And you think that would be something that this team could come back and say, look, we got the wh- what we got to do is put that in the rearview mirror and make that a distant memory and just come out and start the season off strong. And look like we're a contender, and as long as the Suns then's hanging around, I don't know if they can do that. I don't say it's 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 up to Embiid. Embiid's the leader now, no right. doubt about. It. He's he's definitely the captain of the team. He's the guy they're going to look up to. He needs to stay healthy. He said it himself. I mean, he was on the other day did an interview from media day. And they asked him about the MVP last year, and he goes, he said, bottom line is I have to stay healthy. I can't miss twenty five games. And then, of course, the first preseason game comes and he's out. <laughs> yeah, why do you have to rest the first preseason game? I don't understand that. But, uh, <laughs> okay, well, if he rests that game and doesn't have to rest one of those back to backs during the season, then yeah. okay. <laughs> you know, I, I, and, and like you yeah, said, we'll, we'll look at the Sixers' schedule and some different things um, next week and give you more of an uh, in depth account of what's going to, what we think is going to happen, and preview of the upcoming season, which is starting in, what, about 15 days, I think, on the 20th. Yeah, it's getting very quickly. Two weeks from now, we're going to, we're going to be playing regular season NBA. We just end it. Yeah, I know. With the way that, that things went due to COVID and the, and the scheduling yeah. and everything, it was not that much of a long layoff. And right. now we get back to the regular, you know, rotation of seasons. And... Yeah. Back to the old June championship instead of August. Also, before um, before we came on the air, I was uh, finishing up uh, the series on Netflix called Squid Game, and it's pretty much like the, the hottest show going around. It's number one in seventy countries. And um, you said you're going to watch it. I plan week, to. Next week, we can definitely talk about that. We're going to talk about we'll talk about uh, your favorite games as a child. Oh, that so, sounds that sounds good. Because once once you watch it, you want to you want to talk about uh, games they didn't include in the show. I have a few that I that I thought of that they could have put in that they didn't. And um, yeah, it's, 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 anybody listening, if you want to catch something good and really occupy your time with something good to watch, I definitely recommend it. Squid Game on Netflix. It's, it's about a bunch of adults playing children's games and pretty much playing them to the death. So really intense. Yeah, apparently it's the hottest trending show in the world, so... It's, it's pretty much Survivor, the show Survivor, but for real. Yeah, that um, being the hottest trending show in the world, and second, of course, Philly Sports Talk right here on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all its sports is number two. Yeah. <laughs> it no is... No doubt about it. You and should be listening, listening to us on your headphones while you're watching the show. There you go. As I look at the television here, it's it's two nothing in the bottom of the second. The Red Sox, so I guess the home field is helping them out some. So far, yeah. And tomorrow night, uh, the other wild card game, which which should be a very interesting game between the Red Hot Cardinals and the Dodgers. How about that? Amazing! All I mean, the, this <laughs> all those wins by the Dodgers and, and a bloop single can knock them out tomorrow night. I, I don't like it. I think it should be a three-game series. At least. Yeah, at least. That's at the minimum. I wouldn't be against the five-game series. Well, and I wouldn't, you know, if, if, if they want to talk about a situation, though, this this would probably never happen. But it, it, if, if they want to do something like that and have, I wouldn't be opposed to them having a couple more teams from each league make playoffs and shorten the season. Because 
when you've got 162 games and you're having teams like Baltimore and Pittsburgh and Arizona and them guys playing games, it's, it's, it's like, obviously, they, they can play spoiler to some teams, but it's, it's to the point to where, okay, look, cut the season shorter. Maybe, you know, it, it ends the first week of September instead of the first week of October. And if a couple more teams get in the playoffs and you have a five-game series or two five-game series or, or, or something like that, I think that would give baseball a little bit more energy and fans would even be more uh, energized and into it because there, if you add a couple more teams, you would have um, other uh, cities where their teams could actually make the playoffs. But, and, of course, I'm just saying that as a Philadelphia, Philadelphia Phillies fan because maybe they would have been one of the teams this year. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's two ways to look at that. You can, you can say that, you know, the first thing, as soon as you say shorten the season, my, the first thing that comes to my mind is the stats and the records. Yeah, true. So, kind of true. Uh, you, you take too, too many teams in, that then you have a problem with maybe a team that was under 500 making the playoffs. Uh, a team like that could upset a team. You know, I think I think actually tomorrow night if the Cardinals win, they're gonna make changes because the Dodgers, Los Angeles is a huge market. They lose their team like that and win a one game playoff, they're not gonna be happy. Yeah, we saw something like that in the NFL a number of years ago, uh, where an under five hundred team got a home game and then they ended up pulling off a big upset in the playoffs. And... Yeah, that was the Seattle Seahawks, right? Ah, uh, Marshall, we... I think it was the game. I, I, yeah, I, I think I think you're right. The batter, the Saints, I think, did the same thing. Every three and eight and seven or seven and nine in a home game like that. And the so, Reds and, and the Redskins. Red the Redskins. The game where Marshall and Lynch like carried the guys into the end zone. Yeah. You're yeah, right. I mean, I I just look at it from from the perspective of if if the Phillies were in a situation to where uh, they fall into a situation like being a team like Baltimore or Pittsburgh or Arizona or something like that, where, where you have two months of baseball that's just absolutely meaningless. And I don't, I, I, I like the fact that even though I can say the Phillies are not a playoff team, there's still that little bit of doubt there to where, okay, they're actually still kind of in it and they're winning here and there. And each, each, each win is making it look like they have that possibility. I don't, um, I don't mind that to where, when, when the season, you know, comes down to the last week i mean that's good as a fan and so i don't know if shortening the season is is, is the answer or not well I mean, you could you could do that or you can start the season earlier you can start the season you don't have to have 30 preseason game no that's true and you and and there's enough warm uh weather cities to where they yeah. they they could do that they, they'll make if major league baseball started it early you know they started in colorado and new york and things like that where it'd be snowing <laughs> well, is that why they that why they had the Phillies in, in, in Miami and in Atlanta? Did they try to put everybody in warm climate for that final weekend? I, I'm not sure. That I'm not sure. That might be. That's a that, that's an interesting thought. Um, yes. That's that seems like the, what they were trying to do to me. It seems like they had everybody south, so they didn't have weather disruptions. Yeah, like that. Like when you go back to 2008 in the World Series, to where that weather yep. dis dis. Um, That's going to hurt the Phillies going forward because they'll be on the road. Yeah, true. If, if they get to a point to where it's going to matter. Yeah, you know, if, if, if Seattle would have stuck into the playoffs, the Phillies would have had the longest playoff drought in, in baseball? Yeah, they would have. They would have had the longest playoff drought. They have the longest, they, they, they ended the longest drought of, of a non uh, above 500 season this year. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah congrats. And they do have the longest in the National League. We congratulate them on that. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations on being over five hundred. Amazing. <laughs> you have you, you have a guy who arguably is the MVP and a guy arguably is the uh, Cy, Cy Young winner, and your team's two games above five hundred. But the manager, but the manager made a good comment the other day. He said that they put these uniforms on to win. I was, I was like. Okay. Wow, that's that, that's a, that's a new comment. I don't know if you heard Girardi say that on. on was he Dennis Green? <laughs> I think that was after the game on Sunday. He was saying about how disappointed they are, and he said, "Well, everybody who puts this uniform on puts it on to win." And um, I'm like, okay, that's a new one. <laughs> yeah, that's the original. Yeah, I, that's, I'm surprised at that. Yeah, and I was surprised too. I 
only realized this, and, and, I, and I saw this on social media today, and this could be that. I was being sarcastic. I'm saying, of course you put the ball on a win. <laughs> put it on because that's what Major League Baseball says you need to do. Jeez. But this oh. day, but this day here, as the Philly flashback in 2008, the Phillies eliminated the Brewers in in, in, the, in the playoffs. The, the elimination game? No, they beat them um, six to two out in Milwaukee, and I guess that was the first round of the playoffs. Is that the Shane Victorino Grand Slam game? Or no? no, no, that was that was earlier, um, and this, this was in Milwaukee. Pat Burrell hit two home runs, and Jimmy Rollins hit a home run in, in the game. They they beat them six to two to close out the first round, which that, that that sent them to play that sent them to play the Dodgers. Uh, amazing that a playoff series had ended today on October the 5th back in 2008 as the playoffs are just getting started this year. Well, yeah, that's, that's going to most likely go into November this year. Yeah, that's the way it looks. I mean, it, it's, happened, it's happened once before, um, November baseball. I think, I think it was last. I just remember seeing it when the Yankees were playing in that game and it was like 32 degrees or something outside. Yeah, I, I never liked that one bit. Mm-hmm. The baseball's a warm up sport. It shouldn't be decided in freezing temperatures. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And the one thing I'll mention here now when we do the uh, world famous Flyers Minute is that the Flyers have played a couple preseason games and Carter Hart has looked pretty good. Um, I think in five periods, he's only let in two goals. Now, obviously, this is preseason, and hopefully that's something that carries over into the uh, regular season. And I I just don't see the Flyers as a high-scoring team, so they're going to need to really rely on Carter Hart. Oh, what's that sound? The Flyers minute is up. <laughs> yes, the Flyers minute is up, and we had a very, very interesting race yesterday. I'm cheering for the Flyers minute in. <laughs> Bubba Wallace was your NASCAR winner yesterday. Yeah, in a uh, rain-shortened race. Yes. Which, of course, I have a problem with, because how do you schedule a playoff race at a track that doesn't have lights? That, that, that's, that's beyond belief. That, that they that just easily made Daytona that race, and had Talladega in the Daytona spot. It just makes zero sense. Every time they're at Talladega, there's a problem with daylight. Well, and, and last night on Monday Night Football, they had a weather delay in an inside building. <laughs> well, you're right. That and, and as a Denny Hamlin fan, it was it was frustrating uh, a little bit. But I mean, he's he's still in the playoffs, so he was happy because he got the win as an owner. True, true, he did. <laughs> he did. My, my, Michael Jordan has a piece of that uh, team as yeah, well, I believe. Partners in that, yeah. Yeah, and I was. Um, when I first got into NASCAR, I was a little bit into the um, the McDonald's car back back in the, in the early and mid mid nineties. I mean, I, I worked at McDonald's for for a number of years, yep. and I have an interesting McDonald's stat: how many races has the McDonald's car won? Oh wow! In history, <sighs> hmm. I I don't know. The answer is zero. The McDonald's car has never won a race. Was was yesterday the first one? Was he was he on there? I, yeah. I didn't I was at work. I didn't watch it. Yeah, with McDonald's who won, yeah. He sponsored that Wallace? Uh-huh. I'm pretty I'm pretty I'm pretty sure of that. Let's see this. I'm pretty sure that McDonald's was the sponsor. I am and I'm blanking out on the guy who was who was the driver in nineteen ninety four. Yeah, look at that. He has the McDonald's whole uniform on. Yeah. Well, Jimmy Spencer was the guy that used to drive the McDonald's car. Yeah, and there was a guy who was even even older older than that as well. And I can picture him, but I'm I'm blanking on his name here. You you you'll, you'll know the name. Tell me more about him. <laughs> oh my goodness! Hold Buddy, on. He, he drove the McDonald's car. Yeah, he did. He didn't. He didn't drive it. He didn't drive it long. I think maybe it was in 1994. Um, I'll see if this will come up here. The car. Yes, right here. It comes right up. The history of NASCAR's McDonald's. Yeah, it's, it's Bill Elliott. I'm sorry. It's Bill Elliott. Oh, Bill Elliott. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, it's, sorry out there. I was blanking on Bill Elliott's name. It says it has been over 400 races since McDonald's has won a race. I thought they had never won one. Wow. Yeah, because I remember, um, like I said, when I, when I worked at McDonald's, there was some little promotion that was going on, too. I remember wearing uh, a McDonald's um, a 94 hat and, di- and, and, and different things. And, yeah. 
Bill Elliott. And where's where 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 are they going this this weekend? A Roval, Charlotte. Oh wow. So it's that's a Chase Elliott course. Chase Elliott will be the favorite. Yes, yeah, the playoffs continue. I was gonna know. See now now I'm interested because I had heard before they had said during the races numerous times that the McDonald's cars never won a race. Now I'm sure it says McDonald's McCursed. <laughs> NASCAR winless streak. Well, that was it. That was the other thing too. Yesterday, I mean, I guess that was since since the late '60s. That was the first time a black driver had won as well. Yeah. And he he looks like he's going to be a force going forward. He's always good at Talladega. Yeah. He always runs up in the top five there. Yeah, and and he does look like he's a force going going forward in NASCAR, which is which is good for NASCAR to have to have some new new faces and new new drivers, and a lot of them have popped up this year. Yeah, well, I want to go through the standings real quick before we get to Larry's show. Yeah. Uh, Hamlin continues the lead. He's in first place. Kyle Larson second. Joey Logano is now third. <laughs> Brad Keselowski fourth, one point behind Joey Logano. And tied at fourth with Keselowski of Martin Truex Jr. at 3095. Five points back to Blaney. Six more points back to Chase Elliott at the seventh. Kyle Bush sits in an eight on the bubble. Final spot. He's up by nine points over Harvick. Nine versus the Rebel. Ten. William Byron, 11th. And Alex Bowman looks like he won't advance. He's 52 points out of the final spot. Yeah, with a um, couple races left here to end the season, it's going to be it's going to be very, very interesting. Yeah, this is the final race this weekend before the cut down the, the final eight. Yeah, so we'll cover that next week as well, and we'll have more in-depth on, on the Sixers. We'll to go over the Eagles game in Carolina, and we'll talk more about some baseball playoffs as we'll know um, who's won the wild card games, and I'll be into um, the division rounds. And I want to mention here before uh, we go off the air that coming up right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports, following Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris, is Sports Couples Perspective. It is a new show. It will be here at 9 o'clock, Sports Couples Perspective. Tune in. It's in a new time slot. It's in a new time slot. I, I apologize. Actually, there's 16th episode. There's 16th episode, but it will be following us right here at 9 o'clock. And, of course, you can always find them on numerous platforms. And the podcast uh, you can find on numerous platforms as well, just like you can find our show, Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris. So you can find that on numerous platforms as well. Bobby, if, if people want to contact you out there, where can they find you on Twitter? Find me on Twitter at Bobby Cash two fifteen at Bobby Cash two one five. Chris Amos seven one seven. You can find me at Chris Amos seven one seven. And before we go, Southern California Warriors pro football team. The Warriors were on a bye this week, and they're three and three heading into their final four weeks of the season. So, four games left. The Warriors five hundred. They need to get on the ball, and get over 500, and get a uh, winning season. The world of semi-pro sports is unlike any other sports organization. Players pay to play in hopes of so many different outcomes, whether it's playing to get filmed to try out for professional teams, big-time colleges, or just playing to stay in shape no matter what. All semi-pro players have one thing in common, and that's playing for the love of the game. The SoCal Warriors have been on a quest to earn titles and give players second chances since 2017. Whether you're in Southern California or anywhere in the world, give semi-pro sports a chance if you love sports or if you know somebody who needs to get back into sports, give the semi-pro sports a chance. You may get the second chance that you have been waiting for as an athlete. You can find the Southern California Warriors on Twitter at SoCal Warriors. Southern California underscore Warriors is Instagram. And on Facebook, they're at Southern California Warriors. Now, if you have a business out there and you're looking to hire someone, you need to get a background check. And there's no better place to go than Background Check International. That website is bcint.com. Contact Kit Freeman today. Let him take care of that hiring process and the background check process for you. Your business will be much better off. Let him take care of it for you today. Background Check International.com. The website, though, is bcint.com. 
Thanks, everyone, for listening to Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all the sports. Stay tuned. Bobby, we'll see you next week. Good night. Good night. night, See you next week.